Hello and welcome to Cake Bat's YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to cake beer. The beer that I'm caking today is actually, it's this. It's uh, about four or five litres of some leftover work. And I'd really recommend doing this actually. When you make a batch of beer, make an extra four or five litres of work and put it into uh, one of these uh, small demijohns. The reason being is that you can experiment with different yeasts, you can experiment with dry hopping or adding adjuncts after the boil without having to put a whole batch towards something where you're not sure how it will come out. The main batch to this I made about 18 litres of Saison using a farmhouse yeast. With this, uh, with the same work, I, um, I fermented it with a Kvike yeast called Scara. It's supposed to be very it's quite a clean yeast at low temperatures and at higher temperatures it's got more orange marmalade flavours. I fermented it at, at a mid temperature uh, just to see how it would come out and see how uh, the, like how big a difference the yeast will make. They're both, they can both be quite flavourful yeast so I am expecting quite different beers. Anyway, kegging is very easy. There's a small bit of a knack to it, a few things you should probably know before getting involved but I'm going to show you how to do it from start all the way to finish. I would say that it's actually a lot easier and definitely a lot more convenient than bottling. Bottling can of course take like an hour or so if you're doing it by yourself, whereas this is this is a lot quicker. Step one is to, well, actually I guess before step one is make sure you can get to the geezer. Just being very gentle not to um, shake up the, the yeast at the bottom. Step two is to remove the keg from the Keezer or kegerator ready for cleaning. Even when you buy kegs new, they tend to come pressurized, so before you open it up, just pull on this. This is the pressure relief valve to depressurize it. If your keg is new, I would still advise you to follow these washing steps and sanitization steps because you don't know what's been in it before and it just there's no harm in washing it and I'd really recommend washing a keg even if it's new. Then you can open it up. I'm giving the keg a rinse first. I've got this lovely gooseneck tap which makes things easier but if you don't have this, just filling it with a jug of water, um, rinsing it around, swirling it around will work equally well. To give the keg a proper clean, I'm going to rinse it with some Oxy solution. Oxy is just a unscented cleaner for homebrew stuff. It works well on stainless steel and it works well on plastic and therefore it's really good at cleaning kegs. I'm making up a 10 litre solution in an 18 litre keg by pouring in warm water. Mist. Okay, I'm putting the lid back on and I'm going to give it a bit of a shake. That will just stir it in and get it cleaning. You could use a uh, slide to roll it on and your trousers won't get wet. Wait a bit and then give it another bit of a shake. It's still got the oxy cleaner in it and I'm going to connect it back up because I want to clean out the beer that is still in the lines. Another little shake. Also something to note is that the kegs have got a dip tube in there and we want to make sure the inside of that dip tube is cleaned as well. These kegs have got a, they've got something there which says in, there, that says in. That is referring to the gas, which would be this post. So where it says in, that's where you put the gas in. And another fun little trick to remember is that you've got these two 
connects here. You've got one grey and one black. Grey for gas, black for beer. So grey goes on the gas in. You can hear the carbon dioxide from my tank of CO2 fill this up. Uh, but we don't actually need to fill it up that much. I'm just going to stop it. And I'm going to connect the, the beer line to the other post. There we go. And what I'm going to do now, run the cleaner through the line, clean the line and it will clean the tap. So I'm just going to drain it into this bucket, which is the keg we are. Okay, so now that most of the cleaner has run through the keg and it's run through the line and it's run through the tap, we're going to take out the keg, empty out any cleaner left in there and then fill it with sanitizer. So the keg is actually filled with pressure still, and one of the benefits of doing things this way is that you purge the keg of oxygen a couple of times, as you'll see in a bit, and that stops unnecessary oxygen getting into the beer. So I'm just going to pull on the pressure relief valve again, get rid of any excess pressure. Well, sure, nice and clean in there, and just give it a quick rinse. Our keg is nice and clean, but now it just needs to be sanitized. So I've got some pre-made chem sand solution in this jug, and I'm just going to pour it in. You can make up a chemisand solution and it can be reused over and over again, which is why I store it in this bottle. The reason it's cloudy is because I live in a hard water area and it's just useful to have it to hand. You can use it, you can reuse it as long as the pH stays below 3. It will be doing its job. Like before, just need to shake it around and make sure the sanitizer gets all over the inside. Making sure the lid gets nice and sanitised. And once again, with the sanitizer solution inside, we're going to connect it up and run the sanitizer through the beer line. Turn the gas back on for a bit. This is also helping to purge it from CO2. And now we're just going to run it through the tap. And of course I'm just saving the chem sand. So with the chem sand solution, I'm just putting my siphon in here along with the tubing and I'm just going to soak it in there. Everything that touches the beer now has to be nice and sanitised. I'm just going to get out the last bit of chemsam solution, get rid of any excess CO2. What I'll do is I'll place this, this bucket has got the, um, got the chemsam solution in it, so I'm just putting the lid in there. Just give this a swirl and see if there's any, there should really be anything left and there isn't, and it's no rinse, so I've actually got away with not emptying it and then putting beer straight in because there's only been like a bit of foam left. Okay, so everything that the beer touches now has to be sanitised and so I've got my handy bottle of sanitizer here. Before I take the bung out, I'm going to give it a spray. My siphon has been sitting in chem sand solution. got to be careful because the uh, yeast doesn't compact down too well. I'm going to 
try and get the oxygen out. Just going to very gently tilt it. Try and not disturb the sediment. You can see it's very clear this beer. Put the lid back on. So the next stage is to put the keg back in the keyser or kegerator and pressurise it. So this is what I set my regulator at. It's about 17 psi and the reason for that is because I've got my temperature set at 7 degrees and depending on the temperature you want to serve your beer and how carbonated you want the beer to be that will dictate the pressure you need to keep the beer under. The next stage is to wait. It takes about one to two weeks if you just leave the beer and don't touch it for it to be carbonated under this pressure in this temperature. There is a quick way to carbonate it, which is with the beer still connected to the gas, take the keg and then just shake it from side to side for like 20 to 30 minutes. And that can sometimes carbonate it much quicker. I've had mixed results with this. I'm quite happy to wait a week or two. I've got other beer to drink. If you're looking to do a sort of bottle conditioning, but in the keg where you add priming sugar and then let the beer carbonate that way, you still need to put some pressure to the keg because the lid needs some pressure from below it to properly seal it and without that sudden push of pressure on it the CO2 is just going to escape so by adding some priming sugar the CO2 sort of gets created slower and it escapes and doesn't create the pressure needed to seal the, the keg properly. Well, it's actually been about a week now, as opposed to two weeks, and the beer is getting nicely carbonated, so I'm going to draw off a small bit and see what it's like. Well, it's come out quite cloudy, really. Well, it smells very um, doughy. I'm not getting much of that orange. Uh, I probably fermented it too cold for it to come through. But it's kind of bready, kind of doughy. Maybe a slight hint of um, of, of those like uh, fruity esters. Quite bready. Not. It probably could do with a bit more time in the keg to carbonate. So yeah, maybe a week was a bit early, but hmm, it's it's like nice and bready. It's got a bit of a um, balancing bitterness, which is really nice. It leaves a nice lacing on the glass actually. It's got a persistent head. Um, it's really interesting because the main batch, which I'll show you, is really clear. But it's like a really nice easy drinking beer. I'm very pleased with this. It's very easy drinking, very sessionable. In terms of the carbonation, uh, it's got some carbonation. It could probably do with a bit more, like maybe a few more days. It would, um, it would carb up quite nicely, but it's only just slightly undercarbonated for a week. Uh, I'm sure if I shook it around a bit, um, it would carve up a bit more, but I'm just happy to wait. It's got a really nice mouthfeel as it is though anyway. I've got the main batch here, which is the Saison, and it tastes really clean and it's, um, it's like a really, really good beer, which I'm really pleased with. Uh, but as you can see, it's also quite cloudy. Basically, I think I just forgot to put protoflock in the boil, so it's come out pretty hazy. If you found this video useful, please like, please subscribe and comment below on how you got on with kicking your beers or if there's any kind of video you would like to see, if there's anything you'd like to know how to do with homebrew. Thank you.